all right guys now that we have reached the point where you guys were waiting for that is training the machine learning model so we have reached this place by getting the data exploring the data then splitting the data into two parts that is training set and the test set then after that we have written some of the transformation pipeline which will help us to clean up the data prepare the data by transforming the categorical data into a numerical data and also scale the numerical features so that my machine learning algorithm can apply on the data set right away so with all those things in place we are now ready to select and train a machine learning algorithm so i can say that all the hard work has been already done now what's left is it's a very simple thing we just have to import the model initialize the model perform the fit on the training data and once we perform the fit that will find the patterns that is present in the data set and once the patterns that we have found we can go ahead and generate the prediction for the new data that's how simple it is to train any machine learning algorithm guys now for the demonstration purpose let's do one thing here we are importing the linear regression algorithm which is present inside this sklearn.linear_model we are initializing the model and we are calling the fit on the data set so once we call the fit this is going to find the patterns that is present in the data set okay now that we have performed the training here what i'm going to do is i'll just go ahead and i'll try the full processing pipeline on a few training instances so here i'm going to perform the transformation on some data which i have selected over here once i prepared the data that is once i have pre processed the data using my pipeline i am now generating the prediction if i execute this this is going to generate the predictions for each and every data that i have sent okay so this is how the data would look like now if i display the actual values so my actual values are 7210.0 and 8567 is my predicted value obviously there's a difference between the predicted value and the expected value so there's a difference that is for sure that is what we observe on this output so if i check the next value it says it is 279600 it is 305492 so there is a difference now the question is how much distance it is how good or how bad it actually the prediction is now in order to do that scenario in order to explain that scenario we make use of the concept called loss function one of the commonly used loss function when it comes to regression task is root mean squared error okay it is called as root mean squared error so that is the commonly used loss function or a cost function now in order to perform this activity of root mean squared error here i am going to generate the prediction on my training data set and in order to find this value of root mean squared error i am calling this mean squared error function and inside the brackets we will have to generate and we will have to send in the expected label and the predicted values so the expected values are the nothing are the nothing but the original values that i have in my data set and the predictions are the predictions value so this is going to return the mean squared error then i am sending it inside this np dot square root to get the square root value this is going to return us the mean squared error value alternatively i'll give you one more trick guys you can call this mean squared error function okay if you just wait for a few seconds it will show the documentation so you'll have to send y true and y pred at there's one more parameter that's called as squared and you can set it as false so i'll show you i'll send it like this and i'll say squared is equal to false and if i execute this see i'm getting the same output as i've got earlier i don't have to separately find the square root i can just mention this parameter squared is equal to false and this is going to give me the output of mean squared error so which means that overall so overall whatever the predictions that i am generating 
whatever the predictions that I am generating, that prediction will is will be off by sixty eight thousand dollars. So that will be off by sixty eight thousand dollars, which means it's not actually a great score that we are getting right now. It's not actually a great score over here, guys. So this clearly means that the overall output that we are getting this is nowhere closer to the expected values so when we have a model where it is unable to learn the patterns that is present in the data set we call that model as an underfit model so this model is an example of an underfit model so when this happens it can actually mean that the features that we have it does not provide the enough information to make a good prediction or in other words the machine learning model that we have used right now it's not powerful enough to learn the overall pattern that is present in the data set now in order to fix this issue in order to fix this underfitting issue we have got various tools guys so one way is i can actually make use of a powerful model so I can make use of other powerful models. It could be decision tree model, random forest model or a boosting algorithm and try to see whether it is able to learn this complex representation in the given data set. Or the other option that I have is I'll have to come up with a way to find some more data set which could be a best feature and try to fit on the same model. Now in this scenario, the data set is fixed. Now, if I want to generate new data, I'll have to go out and get that survey done. So obviously I don't have that option. And here, since it is underfitting, okay, since it is underfitting, so I cannot go ahead and do the regularization as well. So what we are going to do right now is now that we can clearly observe the overall output that we are getting, okay, is not satisfying. We'll try to use uh, another model we call it as decision tree model so this is one of the powerful model which is out there and this is actually capable of finding the complex non-linear relationship that is present in the data set and don't worry about this as we progress in the learning journey you will learn this model in detail and you'll try to understand how it is actually working on the data set this is just to show you the overall idea, the overall steps that we'll be following while performing the fit. I'll just go ahead and I'll perform the fit on this data set. And once the fit is done, I'll go ahead and I'll generate the predictions. Now observe guys, if you look at the mean squared error from the predictions that I've got from the decision tree model, I've got the mean squared error that is root mean squared error as zero. So the evaluation is coming to zero, which means there is no error at all. That means it looks like the model is absolutely perfect. I mean, this is working well on a data that is a training data that we have used. But there are high chances that this has performed the overfit. So this has performed the overfit. Now, how can we test the overfit? Now, overfit is a scenario. So overfit is a scenario where my model performs very well on the training data, but it performs worse on the data which has not seen. Okay, so that is a scenario. We call it as an overfit scenario. Now, this is more likely to happen if I use this decision tree model as it is. Now, in order to check for overfitting, we also have a test data, but I don't want to use that test data as of now. So what we can do is in order to better evaluate my model, we have a technique that's called as cross validation technique. Now, this cross validation score technique is present inside this sklearn.model selection. I'll import this function and inside the parenthesis, I'll have to send in my estimator that is my machine learning model itself and the data set and the label. And here we will have to mention what is the scoring that we want to use. Now there are various scoring options that is present over here. So since this is a regression problem, I can make use of R2 score 
or I can make use of mean squared error, root mean squared error. So there are various metrics that we have inside this sklearn library. Now in this example, we are using the scoring as negative mean squared error. So that's the value that we are actually trying to find or we are trying to ensure that uh, this is the value using which we are doing the fine tuning. And along with that, we are mentioning CV is equal to 10, which means for my given data set, it's going to split into 10 sub parts and we call it as a 10 folds. So what I'll do, I'll perform the training on nine subsets or nine folds and I'll do the testing on the remaining fold. And at the end, I'll generate the overall average of this 10 folds that I have done. Okay. So that is what it's going to return for me when I call, when I execute this cross validation score. And finally, since this is returning the negative mean squared error, I'm just converting it to the positive and then I'm calling this square root so that I can display the root mean squared error. So if I display this root mean squared error, okay, if I just display this root mean squared error, see, I've got these values. If I call len on top of this, it's going to tell me that I have generated 10 scores. I have found 10 scores for this combination of the given data set and the model. Now what I'll do is on these scores, I'll find the mean and I'll find the standard deviation. Okay. So if I display those scores, this is how the scores would look like. And the average error that I'm seeing over here on this decision tree model, guys, it's 71629. See, it's 71,407. I mean, this clearly shows the model that we have got. It's much worse than what we have got the output from the linear regression model. So the best part of using this cross validation score is it not only helps us to get an estimate performance of the model, but also it will tell me as how precise this estimate is. And we can get that information with the help of standard deviation. It tells me how much uh, distribution of error that we would see around the mean. So it says plus or minus 2914. That is what I would see in this given example. So this information of having mean and the standard deviation, this information will not just simply get it if I simply, if I simply compute the value of R2 score or a mean, root mean squared error. I can only get it if I'm making use of cross validation technique. Okay. But one thing that you have to remember is if you are applying the cross validation technique, it is going to eat up the system. When I say eat up the system, for example, I'm saying the CV is equal to 10. That means it has to perform the fit and then it has to find the value of score for 10 different model. It has to do it for 10 different model. So it comes at a cost. So what we can clearly observe from this model is my decision tree model. It's clearly a overfit scenario. It's clearly a overfit scenario. In reality, it is performing worse than my linear regression model. And guys, we'll try out one more model that's called as random forest model. So that's that comes under the family of ensemble technique. So we'll import this random forest classifier. Okay. And then I'm going to perform the fit and we'll generate the prediction. And let's see how does the overall output would look like. Now here we are performing the fit and I'm using the 100 estimator. So I'm just using the 100 estimator because I want to train 100 decision trees in parallel. Okay. Now in this scenario, I've got the root mean square error, which is less than what I had got from logistic regression as well as the decision tree. Now this clearly shows it's a promising one. It's a promising one. Now, Let's go ahead and the perform the cross validation and let's see how it would look like. So if I go ahead and perform this cross validation score, so let's see if it is better or is it the worse as the same. Finally, we have the outcome. 
and this time we've got the value of cross validation score as 50,000. That's the overall mean. Finally, it looks promising guys, even though it's not a wonderful result, it is, a, it is I would say, a promising one from the models that we have seen, okay? Now, if I do the similar thing on the linear regression, so this is the overall mean would look like. So overall mean is 69052. And if I apply this SVR, that is the support vector machines regression. So the SVM RMSC is crazy. It's more than 111,000. It's like more than one lakh, which means we will be staying far from support vector model. Okay, that is support vector machine. So we can settle with the random forest algorithm. So this is what we do normally. Whenever we feel a model is performing the overfit or an underfit, we'll not decide on a single model and do every circus that is possible. We will check as much as models possible. Okay, we will check as many models as possible. We will apply the cross validation technique so that we can understand how the model is performing the fit on a various models, how the model is performing the fit on a given data set. And then we are going to decide the model which is giving us the better accuracy. So what will we do in a general scenario is that in a general scenario, we want to shortlist a few. It could be two to six models, promising models, which is performing the best. And we will go ahead and try to fine tune those hyperparameters of those model. So that is the overall activity that we will be following when we perform the fit. So with this, we come to the end of this video. As we progress in the next video, we'll look into the topic of grid search, randomized search in the topic of fine tune model. And then we will look into the other topics such as how to analyze the best model and their given errors. And at the end, we'll summarize the learnings from this chapter. So I'll see you next time and subscribe to our channel if you're here with us for the first time. Thank you everyone. I'll see you next time.